Everybody, once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and as you guys can see, it's another yet another interview. Very special guest for you guys, Waskew and Ghost. All right, um, and this guy he has a lot of plays on YouTube, Spotify, millions of plays on one song on YouTube, a really dope music video on the Trap City page. Um, probably has about 815k in, in views, over 300k of. Uh, listeners on Spotify. I could go on about the number stuff, but as you guys know, I don't really just focus on numbers as far as why I interview people. Um, I really think the perspective he has and the path of what he has going on in music, but where he still is on the business side and working his way up in general will probably be useful for, for you guys. So we're about to find that out. What is up, bro? Yo, I'm good out here, man. How you doing? Good, good, man. First and foremost, man, Let's uh tell everybody where y'all f- are from. From uh, it says on my jacket right here, you know what I'm saying? Montreal. That's uh, a city in uh, Canada, province of Quebec. You know what I'm saying? It's a predominantly French province. It's a French province. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's that's where we're from. What's the music scene out there um, in Montreal? I've talked to quite a few people. I know a few people, but I don't think I've ever really talked about it on page. How did, what, what's the perception of the music scene in Montreal? Particularly uh, well, hip-hop-ish. Okay, so exactly. Wow. So in hip-hop, it's, uh, it's a very small scene, and the superstars are really the, the producers, right? We got the Catronadas, we got the High Classifieds, Def P. You know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the producers are the ones that are really leading the wave right now. And there's no vocalist that's like out there yet that really is the voice of Montreal as a, uh, in terms of like who's leading the scene. So it's like a really, really, really small circle. And uh, yeah, like you said, like the, the producers are the one leading the way on that. But that, that's only if we're talking about the English language. Yeah. Like really, really what's like really popping out here is like French rap. On the French side, on the French side of shit, you know, we got guys like Fuki, we got Loud, which is... Um, our stadium here, like where the Montreal Canadiens play, the hockey team, mm-hmm. um, that's called the Bell Center, and we have like the first rapper, local rapper, that's about to have his show there. His name is Loud, and he blew up. Like he, he was part of a group, but he uh, recently went solo, and he he he's gonna have a show up in there. So he's really doing it big. And it's mostly because uh, he got he got local support, but he really popped in in uh, in, Par- in France, in Europe, pa- uh, Paris, France, for example. But uh. Yeah, so the French side of shit, the guys are really popping, but on the English side, it's really uh, yeah, the it's producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the mm. producers are English because they're making music, and pr- like production doesn't have any language to it; it's just music. That's yeah, why, like, it, it surpasses the, the the language barrier in Montreal. Historically, Montreal has been like a a dance music type of city, so that's why you know, like electronic dance music is like a subset of dance music, and that's like since the seventies and shit. So like. All that techno shit, like that Coke and Molly type of shit, like <laughs> at, at the parties and shit, like that's what Montreal is like based off of. Yeah, they don't, so, they don't like listening to a lot of lyrics sometimes. Yeah, so like, <laughs> so like, the, the, the biggest artists ever from Montreal are like Celine, D, Celine Dion, fucking Simple Plan, uh, Ar- Arcade Fire and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. Like, okay. Completely different vibe. Yeah, it's like we don't want to hear all the words y'all messing up our high. That's what that's what they are. Yeah. <laughs> all right, but um, but well, before we get into some of the specifics of working, um, your your path, explain your relationship, like you and Ghost. How did you guys link up, and how do you guys work within music? Um, we met. Okay, so in in Quebec, we have this thing after high school called uh, it's like college, like a junior college type thing. We call it CJF here. So it's like two years okay. after, after you know, after um high school, before you go to university, and that's where I mean. But the thing is, like our high schools are five years. Like you guys have junior high, middle school, and all that shit. Yeah. We don't have that. So like, like after sixth grade, there's like five years that we call secondary. So sec- secondary one or sec one for short, all the way up to sec five. Yeah. So it's like that's like grades seven to eleven. We call that high school. It's all gotcha. Like and then, and then we got that uh, the C Jeff thing. And then we have C Jeff for two years, which is like community college. Yeah. But we're kind of, we have to like do it before we go. To you university. gotta do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta or, go. 
do that. Yeah. Or where you can do it, you can do one year of CJEP, and then that will count as like finishing high school for like other places, because that that would be technically a supplementation for like twelfth grade, and then you can apply to like colleges outside Quebec, so like you uh, in the states or like somewhere else in Canada. And okay. it's like it's really particular to to Quebec, because like if you go to Ontario, like Toronto and stuff, they go to twelfth grade and then go straight to university. Yeah. So it's a little weird over here, but yeah, that's what we met. Uh, we always were talking about music. Like, he would put me on to a lot of old shit, and then we just always talk about music, and one day, it was like, uh, yo, can you do this magic, managing shit? And he's like, man, I don't know about managing. And then he went to do his research for, like, on the internet for, like, three days, and he came back, and like, I bet I got it. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. Yeah. And go see, look, the vibe I catch off of Go is really... Already is a research heavy dude, man. You seem like yeah, you yeah. know a whole bunch of weird, like random facts and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, he got like a crazy. His memory is is ridiculous. So it's like yeah. he'll. I'll be like, yo, yo, when do we release this song? And it would be like, okay, it was February April, 12th, yeah, February twelfth, twenty eleven, or whatever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Dang. You, you, you need yourself a manager like that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, for real, for real. A lot of people are hurting for a manager, so it's dope you have one. So how how let's um get to the point where you feel like you were taking rap seriously. What made you what made what what was that switch where you felt like this is a serious thing for you? Um it was in 2012. Me and actually me and Ghost were on the phone and he just hit me up out of nowhere and we were just talking because we were I we were kind of doing this music shit, but it wasn't a we were just doing it for fun, right? And mm -hmm. he hit me up, yo, if we're gonna do this, like we can do this, but we gotta do it for real, for real. And we just had this whole, this conversation that lasted a long, we have a lot of these conversations once in a while, like it lasts three, four hours. And it's really like, yo, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this for real. And it's not no local shit. Like you gonna, if you're gonna rap, you wanna be the best rapper, then we're aiming at our competition is, is Kanye, is Drake, is Kendrick Lamar, is J. Cole, Jay-Z, not even people who are alive, like it's Biggie, it's exactly. Tupac. You know, it's anybody that we ever idolized in hip hop. Anybody mm. that put music out, that's who we're competing against. Because if you focus on the local shit, then you'll only get local success, and that's not what we're aiming for. You know, so one day we had that conversation, and that's when we were like, it was in 2012, man, I bet. And from, from, from that point on, that's when I uh, took it seriously and really started making moves in, uh, towards that goal. Dope. Dope, man. I, look, I. I definitely, like, I've, I've heard, you know, not all the tracks, but I've definitely heard a few, and I would, I definitely you know, like the vibe, like the feel. You have a very, no, I'm not even going to put you in the pocket with anybody, but I, I like the, I like the style. It's moving. It's already highly produced, highly, uh, you know, great production. Like, for, for real, for real, I, I like the interesting choices y'all make. It might be a, a, a result of where you are. You know what I mean? When you talk about people like Kate and things like that, not saying like, you, I haven't heard of Kate and beat that you're on, but the production choices are interesting than what I oftentimes um, hear. And then your flow is, you know, it's, it's on par with, you know, just with anybody else, you, you know what I'm saying? So where, who inspired you? Who were your primary inspirations when it came to your rap style? Was it like more of a, you more you can do you consider yourself more of a Kendrick camp because Kendrick's probably too he might be too young to be one of your main inspirations but was it more more lyrical type artist in general or was it uh just anything um well I appreciate it and uh yeah that's a good question because actually I, I don't think isn't too young for me to 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 be uh influenced by or inspired by because the older I got, the more I realized like I could get inspiration from anybody. Like it doesn't matter who it is, what it is. It could be like a local, a local rapper that I don't really, you know, listen to like that. But if I heard something that really like inspires me, then I'll take it. But growing up, I really loved Nas. Nas was my favorite rapper. So okay. you, that came from the school of like, if you want to go there, like more lyrical side. But I, I moved away from uh, only focusing on the lyrics. I understand like it's just an aspect of hip hop mm. you know it's like I don't like the the segregation of oh is that lyrical or is that mumbo or is it this or is it that it's like everything is important in, in, in hip hop and it's just about how much of each uh, lane can you use you know what I'm saying so Nas I love Nas I also love 50 growing up like in my early early uh, teenage years it was 50 50 was everything that I listened to and 50 G-Unit related 
I was it. I even bought fucking uh, the Tony Yeo album. <laughs> like that's it. Like <laughs> I did man. everything that came out. I bought like Shady Aftermath, G Unit. Like yo, I, I bought the. Remember that um, Obi Trice album. I bought Obi Trice album. I bought even, <laughs> even the the Rio joint, like the Eminem. Oh album. my god! I bought yeah. every, anything that the first album Jeez. I ever bought was Get Rich or Die Trying. From then on, I was hooked. You know, Duh. so you, you were walking around with a bulletproof vest, were you? <laughs> I asked my mom when to get that. She almost smacked me, like, oh man. I remember <laughs> I was in winters trying to look for you in the clothing, like, yo, what's up? <laughs> like, Jeez. that shit was, yeah, man. It, it's been a lot of different people over the years. Like I said, Nas 50, um, uh, Andre 3000, uh, mm -hmm. Most Def. Uh, Lauren Hill, like, it's a lot of people I listened to growing up. I really like ASAP too. I oh. like uh, Kendrick. I like the uh, Kate Cole for a while too. Like, it's I, I went like my inspiration really came from everybody. Okay, dope. Yeah, I could definitely hear a few of those people, and and then even the content that you talk about before we, because I like just to understand a little bit about the artist mindset and and what they like to talk about even before you necessarily get into just the progress of the music from a consumer and marketplace standpoint. And when I hear just your content, I've heard, it's, it sounds like you care about certain issues. You don't just talk like random stuff, right? You're usually saying something or you're mentioning like something about like, I don't know, black skin. I'm just making up so random. I'm not, I can't think of a, a certain lyric, but there's, there's a sense of consciousness. I don't mean like that in the whole the pigeonhole type of way you're a conscious rapper but you're, you're making statements about things that you care about. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, I, I don't, um, like, like you said, I don't go into it as, oh, I'm the conscious rapper, so I have to say, I have to make a statement about something every single time, but if something is on my mind that I want to address, I, I don't shy away from addressing it. You know, like a song, Angry Black Man, talking about, you know, just the feelings of, of, a, of a, a black man in North America in, in this type of, society that we have like I'm gonna talk about it I'll talk about whatever I want to talk about you know what I'm saying so I definitely don't stop myself from talking about shit that I think is important but I also don't make it my point for every single song to talk about those things so it's uh it really it really depends on how I feel or how really what the beat is telling me if I'm listening to a beat and I'm like okay this this is giving me some angry vibes like I want to I want to go in on this or I want to no, it's more relaxed introspection type shit so I, mm -hmm. I like uh it was Ghost actually he told me one time, he was like, yo, this, this shit really stuck to me. But he was like, yo, it's, it's really like your voice is just the, the last instrument to place on a beat. So it's like you can't just layer your vocals on top of a beat. It's like, OK, whatever the song is inspiring you Thank to you. do, you, you add like the last instrument, which is your vocals. So whatever, whatever the song really, really needs is what I add to it. Hey, man, those are super wise words, man, because I I'm. I get so glad when people understand that because there's so many people and I'm not talking about when it's even to the extreme of like a ghost, not a ghost, uh, a blue face where they're like, Oh, he's off beat or something like that. But there's so many people, they got flow and they're rapping a lot. They're saying so many words, but it's like, do you even care about the beat? Like it's, yeah. it's not musical. It's like, you're rapping, you're a rapper, you're a great rapper, but as an artist or a musician, like you guys are on completely different fa uh, pages. And I think a lot of times people like to blame the lack of appreciation for technique and skill for why they don't have a fan base. When sometimes it's like, no, nah, your music isn't good. Your, your rapping is good, but your music isn't. That's a hundred percent. It's like, oh no, you guys don't want to listen to, you only want to listen to the mumble shit. Like you don't want to, you don't want to listen to lyrics. But like, if you don't make me want to listen to your shit, I'm not going to fucking listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's people, a lot of people, um, a lot of old heads or people who are like purists or whatever, right? They want to talk yeah. about, oh, how right now, the, the, the way it's going right now, people don't care about anything, but I think it's just a pushback towards how heavily lyrical it was, and that's just a natural pushback from, like, everybody. Like, yo, we don't want to hear, like, it, it's such a thing as overload. Like, if you're giving me too many things to listen to, like, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna tune out. So it's yes. about strategically putting shit that you want to put out. That's why I really appreciate the artists who are able to uh, tutor both sides. Like, I, but, like, I, I don't even believe in, like, lyrical or non-lyrical, because if you put words on a song, they're lyrics, so it's lyrical. You know what I'm saying? You can't have a song without any words on it. 
I'm just gonna have an instrumental type song. But like for me, like th there's people that that uh they appreciate like a higher level of the usage of in uh, of uh, the English language yeah. or in a in a poetic way, and like more towards like the realm of Shakespeare and shit like that. And then there's people who just want to listen that that who just want to listen to music based off of like emotions and the simplest words may, may make the biggest impact yeah so it's like this whole like lyric shit versus non-lyrical shit i would prefer people start thinking about songwriting exactly songwriting like really writing because like when you when you focus on songwriting like yo you can think of Britney spears and be like yo like that shit isn't lyrical but it's like every young bitch like 13 years old 16 years old or like even 33 they're feeling what she's saying you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but lyrical it's just like it just resonates and it translates but it, it goes to where what, the, what definitions are because growing up for me when when i heard the word lyrical it meant how many words can you rhyme like it don't matter what like not no. just like, i love pat Poos, but back then <laughs> yo in like 05 06 or so whenever it was i i was a disciple of pat Poos. Like I, I I knew alphabetical slaughter for like the whole thing, and then but then yeah. you go back like yeah that's cool that's cool rapping ability but is it gonna speak to you like one line from Nas? And the answer is yeah. no. The answer is no. You know what I'm saying? You can say, wait, uh, I know Jizzet, whatever. Um, what's his name? Kendrick Lamar had a line. I remember what song it was. It was like, rappers use big words to make the similes curves. My simplest shit be more pivotal. And it's like. Yeah. It's true. If, if 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 it has to take you thirty bars to say what one person can say in like one yeah, bar, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if it, mm -hmm. like it takes you a whole verse, for, and for me, it takes me one bar. Then who's a better writer? You know, saying who's more lyrical. So <laughs> it, it really depends on the on the um on the definitions on the definitions. But for me, like 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 Ghost said, the songwriting is the most important. Like, what can you convey with your words? to make it yeah cool yeah. um yeah so yeah we're really we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna walk and talk a little bit that's cool that's cool hey yeah, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you go oh, ahead yeah. yeah the songwriting is the most important i'm with y'all 100 percent, man i like for, at the end of the day is what are you measuring anyway right we're gonna have a lyrical competition okay we're measuring by that but oftentimes if you're measuring by the impact of people like what it how, what it changing people's lives or really hitting certain moments in their lives outside of just appreciation of technique, then it's usually gonna be more about songwriting. And Steve Jobs said, I believe it was him, but he basically said like simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And and Albert Einstein basically said something like, if you talk, just alluding to. Like if you have to use all these big words and things like that to explain something, then you don't get it. And I think all that stuff speaks to the fact, and it's nothing against the lyrical thing. Well, quote unquote, using a lot of words, using elaborate language, none of those things. But for one, you kind of have to sit with the fact that if people don't, how can you expect to impact people if they have to stop and look up every single word, one. You know what I mean? Like, even if you're just alluding to stuff in your particular hood and they might not understand the lingo or what street you're talking about, they're going to miss out on things, right? Whenever you're related to stuff that people don't get, you're decreasing the amount of impact that you could make. So, like, whenever you simplify things, I always talk about how Tupac did, uh, early Kanye, they're ultra simple artists, like, as far as the lines they delivered. But the impact that they had on the lines was, was everything. And you don't have to be lyrical for that. So I, I'm with y'all 100. percent Tupac, Kanye, and uh, and uh, and Fifty, they have like like yo, I wouldn't call them like crazy lyrical or like super lyrical or whatever, but they have reality bars. It's yeah. Like every line is like so real. You know what I'm saying? Like Fifty just saying that shit on Many Man in the second verse where he's like, with the with the fucking the shit about the rain and like this and that. It's like yo, yeah. uh, all these like one liners that they like stacked up. What, like one after the other, it's like crazy, complete like song. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, writing mm -hmm. is incredible. Like, uh, yeah. Then if we're gonna talk about lyrical versus songwriting, but there's a word that comes into songwriting that's the most important for me is quotables. What are you gonna What are you gonna leave the song with? Like, are you gonna quote something crazy, crazy lyrical, or are you gonna quote 
something that Kanye said that was like, oh my, I can't believe you said that. Like that shit. <laughs> it's you know a lot of times. Value, uh, yeah, minus. exactly. Like Drake, Drake has gets away with that stuff a lot. He's a good writer too, because in the sense that it's like, if it makes you feel like, damn, I could have come up, I could have came up with that. Like, oh, why did not think of that? And that's mm-hmm. what makes it like consistently brings you lines that you're like, damn, I should have thought of that. It's so relatable, it's quotable, and it's like, it's gonna stay in your mind forever. Speaking for a generation, speaking for a society, just being a people's voice, just telling them what's really on their mind. They might not even be able to express it themselves yeah. or formulate it in their own mind, but like you're able to write it for them. And then they're like, oh yeah, that's exactly Bruh, what I've always That's a perfect description because I, I always say most of those lines that are super impactful and hit people that way are actually, they're like memes on the track. You know how you see memes and it's talking about some shit like, yo, I never spoke to anybody about that before, but it's crazy. They, they're right in my head with that one, right? That, that's actually the perfect, the perfect description of it. Like when you when we talk about quotables, when we're talking about, you know, really si- simplistic, not simplistic, but like simple uh, uh, lines and stuff. It's really about what, what you're going to put as a caption on your, on your meme. <laughs> it's, it's caption music, you know what I'm saying? People want to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> for real. So maybe maybe at some point somebody will start reverse engineering. They'll just create memes and then put the dopest memes. <laughs> <into their scenes. laughs> hey, it's gonna happen. Well, hey, let's uh let's talk about like that journey you guys took because uh to start to get to these plays where now you're hitting a million plays or you've done collaborations with people who have a little weight behind their name. What was that first step you took? You saw you said you would take um it seriously. Um, you knew that you wanted to get outside the city, not just be in the city. Yeah. What What was your, how fast did it take you to start catching on where you felt like, you know what, like this music thing is starting to work out? Um, but you know what, the, the right mentality is I don't feel like, I know Ghost doesn't either. We don't feel like we we even started really doing anything. This is like the prequel to, to the actual movie that's going to come, you know what I'm saying? So. All the little, all the moves we've been doing, we know. I know it's good moves. I know it's things that's gonna help me get further. But if we see it as, oh, I did something big, then I'm just gonna stop here, and it's gonna be the end. So it started off. I made it. A lot of my music was uh, Montreal centric. I collab with Montreal artists, and and that was cool. And like I was, you know, doing a lot for the city and stuff. But at the end of the day, we had to start venturing outside to really. You know, get the eyes outside of the city to to come fuck with me. Because at the end of the day, if you blew up, if you people outside the city fuck with you a lot, then automatically people in the city are like, oh yeah, 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 I know that guy. Like I'm, I'm gonna fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? Before that yeah. shit, from like 2012 to like 2015, like yo, the journey was bad different because like yeah. we were both in university doing our degrees. But like he he graduated from like psychology and shit, so Dope. like we weren't like this music shit like 100. percent Like for me, actually, like. Like, there's like this bubble, like in Montreal, right? Like right before all the producers blew up and shit. Um, like Kate before before K, before everybody knew who Kate Trinata was, he was Kate Tradamus. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And like, I was like, yo, like this guy is gonna be like the Just Blaze, the Timberland of our generation. You know what I'm saying? So I got to link up with him. Like, I was actively going into the scene. Like, yo, I was working full time. I was doing school full time. And I was going out from Thursday to Sunday every single night, you know what I'm saying? Making, making like, making, making appearances in, in the scene. And, like, I bought, like, the Marty McFly shoes, you know what I'm saying? Like, 12, 12 racks and all that shit. Yeah. Like, my fashion shit, like, from head to toe was crazy. Like, I used to be on high beast forums where, where the reason why I called him that night to tell him, like, yo, let's take this shit seriously for real for real was because I was seeing Tyler the Creator blow up off of a forum, off of high beast forums. That's mm. when Dallas used to go every fucking week to see how people dress up so that he could go to Kanye and give him his his style too, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Wally would attend those forums. Fucking uh, Lupe Fiasco used to attend those forums. So when I was seeing people like blowing up, just being posted on Hypebeast, I was like, I have to dominate this website. So I became one of the most popular users on Hypebeast. Just with that established connection, I was like, I got to do this in real life too. So I went out in the scene every fucking week Four days, a w- four nights a week, every single fucking. Week. I connected with uh with Keitra. I connected with High Classified. High Classified. I ended up doing the song with the weekend. I, I connected and Future, and uh, I ended up connected with the P, who was like uh selection. He signed to Selection and shit like that. So like, I just became like a, a figure in the scene 
but I was always like, yo, I have this rapper. He's going to release it. He's going to release it. I said that for three years. And then in 2015, you know, once I had like all the tracks ready with Keicho and everybody else, I was like, yo, it's time. Like, we got to drop this shit. He already finished his degree. I dropped out because I was like, fuck this shit. I'm going to do this music shit. And then <laughs> we were then like, yo, as soon as we released our first song, it was over. Like, the first song got a noisy premiere. Uh, it got like one of the most views on Hype Beast, like the day it came out. And for, for, that, for that whole week, it was like in the, in like the top five new sh- yeah. shit for like Hype Beast. Dope. And so it's just like, there was no turning back. You know what I'm saying? I was like, we got to continue. And then after that, for the next six fucking months or seven months, we're dropping a song every, every two, two weeks. weeks. Every two weeks, a song comes out. You know what I'm saying? And we're getting blog after blog after blog. Like, first it was noisy. After that, it was OK Player. Then it was Hype Track. Then it was Complex. Then it was uh, ID. And then it was uh, Exclaim. And, like, you know, just, like, one after the other. Eventually, we got Fader and everything. Like, we just got they weren't just picking. They weren't just picking um, you up, though, right? You, you guys were, like, notifying some of them that, that some more tracks were dropping, right? Uh, like as soon as a track would drop, we would work on like sending out the press for like uh, yeah. the next release and all that shit. Like at that the, that first run, like we call it the first run from 2015, basically up until that MT Aliens, the first MT Aliens drop. Like we were just freestyling a lot of this shit. Like yeah, we were just, Yo. I made a whole bunch of tracks, but then afterwards, like we're like oh damn, these tracks ain't good enough, or we got to do something different. So track would go, come out, try to do another track, and then release it again in two weeks, and just like. It was a lot of it wasn't it wasn't much planning. We just kind of jumped in, and but at some point you gotta just, you know, what I'm saying, go in and then see what happens, and then start adjusting from there. Yo, I, I knew this shit was working because like yo, like suddenly like Double XL fucking posted one of the tracks. I was like, okay, yeah, we, we got this. And then right after that, Empire hollered at us. And yeah. It was a distribution deal back in 2015, so we got that. And then fucking like. I'm looking at like the st- like uh, the stat trackers or whatever, and I see like Warner Music Group and shit is like checking checking the website and shit, like uh, the, the, the 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 Tumblr and shit. And then I'm like, alright, so we're actually making noise and people are actually looking out for us. So then, see, wait, yeah. one 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 real important thing that you did because someone asked me, is this a thing that you can do? Like they, they were like, instead of just releasing music, should I just wait? till I build connections and things like that and then release. And I said, that's definitely an option. Like they, they, they thought they had to just keep dropping, keep dropping, keep dropping and, and, and then build up that way and then get connections. But I know, I told them there's a lot of people I know that were, they might've just been a photographer or videographer, but, what, but for whatever reason, it might not have been their strategy, but they got a lot of connections. And then when they decide to be an artist, it, it set them up on a whole different platform. It sounds like you guys were able to do that except especially ghosts, you know, being a manager that's actually on their stuff, like you got to focus on that heavily while, you know, you got to just focus on becoming a better artist and getting all that stuff together, which is, that's the benefit, of course, of having a team. Everybody doesn't have, I mean, well, I mean, it's just two people, but it's still a, a duo. I don't know if it's technically a team, whatever number that, that takes, but like that's, that's the benefit of having a manager that's really doing their stuff because there's a lot of managers uh that's i look they just they just aren't there and they don't understand it. i'm not even gonna say they're bad managers when we're talking about young developing ones but i don't think people understand the importance for the manager to be out in that scene you're the manager's a sales guy basically Bro, you like, gotta be and you gotta chase it down all the time you gotta understand the culture you know what i'm saying like Keitra and all of them like i became friends with them you know what i'm saying they saw me i understand the beats like when he gets his shit mixed it's as if like they were going to release their own instrumental tracks. That's exactly how that they would want it mixed. They want their kick, the Montreal sound, like the kicks and the snares got to be the loudest shit. You know what I mean? Like the way our mixes are, people don't know this because they're from outside of the city, but like we have a very, very specific type of song when yeah. it comes to like mixing our beats down. So like mm-hmm. I embody this whole shit, this whole Montreal culture. This whole beat scene and shit, I embody that shit because I've been in the mud with all of them. You know what I'm saying? I got my respect from all of them. Like, Lunas, like, tight with, you know what I'm saying? He produced uh, Blood on the Loose by Kanye. Well, he was one of the producers on, on that track. And it's just like, yo, I know the whole entire scene. And I was like, yo, once this shit comes out, I'm going to have everybody's support. You know what I mean? I, I, I was like, yo, we can't rely on one strategy. We got to attack it every single way. I was like, I got to attack the fashion wave. 
I gotta attack the the internet wave. I gotta attack the Montreal wave. I just gotta take all these scenes and like it's like spirit bomb from like Dragon Ball Z and shit. <laughs> Wait, what, 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 what do y'all mean by the fashion wave? Because I think I know what you mean, but I don't want people to miss it. So when you say you have to attack the fashion wave, what does that look like, and why would you attack the fashion wave? Because like yo, um, like I came off of the hype beast forums. You know what I'm saying? Like Tyler the Creator, like. He's not the first person to rock Supreme, but like he made it a trend in the mainstream. You know what I'm saying? That was the thing in high, on, on the Hypebeast forums. Everyone was rocking Supreme. But he became like the face of Hypebeast at that period of time. Around the same time, like a year later, ASAP Rocky off of the forums and off of the OVO uh, blog and shit like that. Like he blew up off of the fashion wave as well. And uh, it's just that I was like, yo, since I'm already killing this fashion shit online, yo, I joined Tumblr and I was, and I was like, I hate Tumblr. But I was like, yo, let me see if I can do something. So I posted like a few outfits and I went Tumblr viral. So like, okay, I can do this shit. Then I shut down my Tumblr after a month after that. So then I was like, oh, I gotta translate this shit. So the first music video, yo, there's like $40,000 worth of outfits in that, that music video. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just like Damn. killed that shit. And that's why when it got posted on Hypebeast, yeah. it stayed in the top five, like news story section for like a week. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. like I just wanted every single demographic I could I could get. You know what I'm saying? That's what I, I that's why I like when when people focus on and realize that there's these adjacent communities that's not just like the music community, and you could cap off of these adjacent communities. Whether that's a lot of basketball players who like my music, so I'm going to be an athlete in the in the locker room and all my homies because I'm in that world, or whether it's fashion or whether it's just uh, videography, photography. Uh, there, I mean, there's so many like random different like categories that you were gaming all, and there's you know subcategories within each of these categories. But people don't realize there's so many other communities. It's hard. As a matter of fact, that music category is the hardest because one, yeah. when you're telling them to check for your music, they're less likely to check for your music, right? Or when you come in as I'm and you're competing with other rappers or other artists, so it's a different space. Especially in a city like everyone, everyone's a fucking rapper. So it's like, yeah, what, what's gonna make me listen to you other than the thirty other niggas that I just saw on the bus? You know what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. sometimes you gotta get get to them from a different angle, and they're like, oh shoot, you make some dope music. You know? Yeah, and it's weird because like, yo, they don't listen to English rap unless you're like top five. You yeah, know what I'm saying like you gotta be a Drake <laughs> crowd here. You got like, yo, what when people have their tours and shit, you realize like, okay. They'll go to Canada, they'll be like in Toronto, they'll be in Vancouver, and then you see Montreal's not Sometimes on the thing. They don't come to because, you know why? Because there's no fucking crowd for them. Even though they're they're a big artist, if they're not Jay Z big, or they're not, big. yeah, they're not gonna get booked over here because there's not gonna be like audience members pulling the shit up. You wow. gotta be that big. It's either you're that big or you're a French rapper. Or like and, and and besides that. If you're not a rapper, you have to be a pop star. Exactly, that's exactly it. You have to be a pop star. You can't be a rapper. You have to be a rapper who goes beyond rap. Like you've broken through the ceiling of rap and you're like a pop artist. Sheesh, but you gotta be up there, up there. All right, so when you, <clears throat> and I wanna get deeper into some culture and things like that uh, with you guys in that specific area a little bit later again too. But for your music, what was the first track that hit one million? One million? Yeah. <laughs> the commercial. The Kijiji ads, yeah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I did this commercial for um, Kijiji. Uh, what, what's the what's the equivalent in the States? Uh, close five or, like, okay, so, like, like eBay is okay, like, no, 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 not even. So, like, eBay owns this company called Kijiji, and it's, like, a, it's like, a cra cra it's like a Craigslist. Yeah. But, like, over here, Kijiji is more popular than Craigslist. So. Okay. So, but they were doing like this new marketing uh, strategy campaign, whatever, to, to get KGG popping. So they, they figured it out have some local artists to try to, like, to, to, get, to keep it authentic, but to try to, you know, get some people interested in the shit, right? So they, they had this ad up or whatever. They're like, okay, we want, like, local rappers or... or they, look, they already, had, whatever. they already had French rappers for it, but they were like, yo, we need an English rapper for this shit. Yeah. And, like... The city has no good English rappers because <laughs> motherfuckers don't speak English here. So they're like, but then like uh, one so, of one of Kitchenada's biggest uh, video directors, his name is Martin Perry. So he was like, he saw the about to blow music video. Yeah, he was well, like, oh shit, I think he can rap it. Like he could do the double time flow. Basically, that's what it was. He was they were looking for somebody that could do double time flow, and they're like, yo, can you uh, 
and then they sent me the beat. They're like, yo, can you do a little something on this? Rap about cars and do a double song. I'm like, yeah, it's light work. So I did it, sent it in, and they were like, yo, yeah, we want you to come in right now. Let's do it. So I did that. We did the whole commercial thing. And then it was basically, uh, there was two. The first, the first campaign, it was two. One of them was like 30 seconds long. The other one was 15 seconds. And the one that was 15 seconds long had like three, it's at three million views. Right yeah, now. yeah. And that was my first thing. I went like, Viral in a sense, and I was like, the Canadian was it went viral yeah. because ten percent of Canada's population watched. This yeah, ad. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I remember that's when I, I started like people started recognizing me like, oh yo, you the the Kijiji guy. I was like, yeah, that's. that's <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be pigeonholed. I was like, oh, you the guy that raps in commercials, but I, I knew I, like Ghost actually told me like, yo, it doesn't matter what you do, but if the music is dope at the end of the day, then that's not you're gonna be known for the music. I was like, yo, if you, if you fear of becoming a X type of rapper, you're not you're not that good of a rapper. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like you, if you're really really good, you're you're gonna break through every fucking ceiling that they put you under. Every, like, yeah, every, you. everything is just a new level. There's always gonna be ceilings to create. It's up to you to break through the next one because that every, this is every level is its own ceiling. That's interesting that you uh, broke through with that placement because that was that's basically what it was. And and how did Touch on that process a little bit more because I think a lot of people don't understand placements. I remember I didn't fully understand how some placements work um, until I was talking to this one guy who got a placement deal. And what I'm talking about specifically is not when you have a song and then they put it on a commercial, but that sounds like that other process where they're like, this is what we need and you create a song from that. Is that what y'all did? Well, for, for the KG commercial, it was, I think the reason why it worked so well is because they really wanted to keep it authentic. So there was not many restrictions. It was like, yo, talk about cars, be you, like keep your, your, your charisma, your energy. And like, basically like don't cuss, but talk about these specific cars. And they just let me go with it. So I just wrote like a lot of times I make my, my own music that way. It's like, okay, somebody would say something. I'm like, Oh, I like that idea. And I'll just run with it. So it's like, yo, run with the idea of cars. So I did it and they loved it. And we just recorded it and everything was like, they, there was no, oh no, you got to change this. Oh no, you can't say that or make it sound like this. It was like, yo, do you? And then it's going to be good. And that's why it was like, it was authentic. And that's why people really, really fucked with it. And it's not even a song. It's really just 30 seconds and 15 seconds. So it's really almost like a freestyle type shit. And given the house. Yeah. People, right. Yo, people are asking for the song. Like, yo, when can I download this? Yeah. So I'm like, what? It's 15 seconds, 15 seconds. Like, what the fuck you, you didn't cap off of that? You didn't make a full song off of it? But, but I mean, I was thinking about it, but it, it never really got to that. But, but the, like, the they, way people's they, attention spans are yeah, nowadays, yeah, too. Like we were just talking about um, uh, Lil Nas X, <laughs> the the Old Town, Old Town Road. That's just, yeah. that's just a minute and 47 seconds. Like, that. that's that's what music is now. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, even, even XXX on that show, with me, it's yeah. like a minute, like 30. I Shit is crazy. Because like, like we talked about talked about before, I came from, we came from the era where songs were minimum. Five minutes, man. Like three, three verses. And then it got yeah. to two, like third verse got deleted. And now it's like, it's, it's one verse, like half a verse, like eight bar verse. Bro, you remember the oh, detention verse. rebate? You remember that shit all uh, the time. That shit like oh. seven minutes, man. So it was like really a little bit of an adjustment to to the, the new age, but that's what's cool. Like going, circling back to like how I attack rapping or what, what school I'm in. It's more like, yo, I'm able to keep the essence of, of lyricism or songwriting and just add it to the to the modern modern day. Yeah, you know actually, saying? so like my, my main thing was like, yo, this is what you gotta do when you do this rap shit. You gotta be able to impress the old heads. So you gotta be able to compete against Cool G Rap, Nas, Andre 3000, Big Pun, Big L, uh, Wu-Tang, anyone. You gotta be able to like do that, but on modern day beats, I still keep it catchy or like have, it's really all about the delivery nowadays. Yeah. So like, if the delivery is hypnotic and you're still able to keep lyricism, quote unquote, then you win all crowds. Jay Z does this perfectly. Like, yeah, first thing just, people listen to is they don't care about the lyrics the first time they listen to something. They're really just like, yo, this shit, does this shit sound good? Yes. Exactly. Okay, I'm gonna listen to it again. Oh, I texture. caught that. That was kind of cool. The texture. And then the after, way. when you get to the fourth, fifth listen, that's when, like, oh shit, that was, what did you say? That shit was crazy. Exactly. But you really gotta, exactly. you gotta, you gotta reel them in. You know what I'm it's, it's, it's about attacking all the types of listeners. The passive listener, it's just listening to it, the musicality of it. Yeah. And if it enters the eardrum and it's really good, and as, as well as uh, 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 what 
know that the passive, oh yeah, yeah, the passive listener and the focused listener, the one who's really analyzing the track. Yeah. So yeah, that's attack them all. You know what I'm saying? They gotta realize most people are going to be passive listeners at exactly. when, when they first hear your song because they're you're interrupting their 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 space or what they're on most times to start off with. So I, I definitely agree with the delivery thing. I, I think a perfect example of that is Cardi B, right? Um, and really most music outside of hip hop, but let's just say within hip hop, they say Cardi doesn't really write a lot of her stuff. Cool, but her delivery is undeniably off the chain. Like, and you, you can write for anybody, but if that delivery isn't on point, it's still not gonna connect the same. And she kills her delivery, she owns it. And then outside of rap, I mean, you know, a lot of people got songwriters, but it, it's all about the delivery anyway. So I think that's a, a point well made. That's a, um, that's, that's a good point you brought up. I was talking about Cardi B the other day. I think I was, I was just shooting or playing ball and uh, somebody played some Cardi B and I was like, man, the way she says shit, like who, like, it just sounds so good. I don't care who the <laughs> fuck, bro. She sounds yeah. good, bro. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about Michael Jackson music. I'm still listening to facts. Hey, if for real, that's just the reality of it. And I mean, that's coming from people who are in it, like the people who are just fan fans, like they, or you know, the, the general consumer. They definitely don't care about most of this stuff that you know people in forums stress over or other rappers hating on other rappers talk about. Like fans don't care about that stuff. They just want the end result of like, the, how does it make me feel? The fans are selfish. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the finished product, the finished package, and it, that's not that's not to say that um, that's all that, but like that is a, a yes. part of the art that is necessary. Like you can't just be a good writer, you can't just be good lyrically, and you can't only have a good flow. You gotta have yeah, every, every, you gotta have the whole package. Musically, you have to be good. Uh, your Instagram pictures gotta be popping. You gotta yeah. have a good photographer. You gotta have everything. Not that you you have to have everything, but the best have everything. Yeah, they do, definitely do. The ones who are pop, they have everything. They yeah. have like but they got the whole package. They got a they got a whole machine behind them. Whole to machine. Care the whole entire brand and shit. But uh um, When are you guys gonna get a machine? When are we gonna get a machine? I we yeah. get so we are a machine. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, like yo, there's for no four way years, it's been just there's no us. way like yo, all these fucking like uh, major label deals and shit, like they wanna lock you up to fucking minimum six album, five album, six album deals, not signing that shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Taking away like seventy percent, whatever the fuck, fifty percent. You even take fifty percent. Fuck out of here, man. If like, they're talking about five, six album deals to y'all, that means they think y'all are pretty good and have a promise. That shows. That shows a lot because there's a lot of artists. They're just talking about. Let me get two albums and an option. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah, bro. Like, give us one album deals, but they don't want to give us that one album deals because they want to lock you up. So fuck that. Yeah. You know like I'm, I'm not doing that shit. Like, yo, on top of that, we we already took care of like the hardest part. Which is like being able to get a fan base. Like, how, how what, what more else can you do? Like, yo, you, you know what? Like, what's crazy is like before back in the day, they used to sign people and then build their crowd for them. Nowadays, you have to build your own crowd and then they sign. It's like you do the whole Fuck work, that, bro. you do the whole work, and then the if, if, label takes the credit. Like, so, yep. yeah, that shit, man. like that's why I'm more into we more into like collaborating with with a label, like on a single. Okay, boom, let's get the single going. You push it, we push it like it's mutually, it's a partnership rather than, okay, I'm signing this and you are my fucking master. Yo, bro, shit, you know what I'm saying? You, like, you know what I love is when we're independent and we do and we compete against major numbers. Like, fuck that. That's what I'm trying to get numbers, to. Let's, let's see some of y'all's like basic. I think I just had y'all Spotify up. Let's see. All right. Yeah, like, all right. These are, these are very, very solid numbers right here just on this alone. Now, what do y'all do with these numbers? Like, do y'all, so do y'all approach, do y'all approach anybody for any kind of deals and, and say, hey, this is what we got going on. And can we get a brand deal? Can we get a partnership? Or can we get some kind of option deal, distribution? What, what are you guys using the numbers you have right now? Like 348,000 monthly listeners, you know, like that's, that's nothing that's needed. I'm sure that's been higher at some points. I'm sure it's lower at some points. Like what, what do you guys look to leverage your current, fan base and activity for at the time uh right now like yo honestly i ain't looking for shit like the only thing that i'm doing right now is scouting all these internet producers so that we can keep getting like a million plays every time we drop a track so there's like three songs that are going to come out this month 
And for the rest of the year, man, yo, there's probably going to be like 30 songs coming out. And each producer doing the beat, they probably each have like a, mo- a million monthly listeners each. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's, like, that's, 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 that, that's, that's a good how, strategy. That's how I'm scouting shit. They, Wait, they, say, that, say that strategy again so, so it doesn't get missed. I'm scouting every single producer who's hot. Who's like, they, they haven't blown up, but they're in their pockets. They're getting these niche, like, million monthly listeners. Like, they got their crowds and shit. And, like, mm-hmm. watch the only rappers who can rap on EDM and dubstep and hip-hop and all that shit. So because of that, like, variability, like, they'll listen to Majesty. Majesty's not a beat that, like, a regular rapper can rap to. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. dude, that's why, like, with that ability, I'm able to hit all these producers up who make, like, dubstep, make, like, whatever, whatever. And I'm able to gather their fans to build crowd like a shepherd you know what i'm saying that's dope like uh get, that's, like, over these millions and like I, we're, look i'm trying to just like put numbers on the board because like at the end of the day that's really what matters you know what i'm saying and speaking of the levers like i guess that that is that that's the strategy we are both we're hitting up all these producers making all these different types of songs so that i'll be able to do whatever the fuck i want finally you know what i'm saying like mm. i could just i'll be able to drop my own projects by myself just like okay, this is this is what I do, you know what I'm saying? But it goes back to goes back to what you were saying before about, or like how we talking about what what Ghost had to do, and in the meanwhile, what I was doing was just like sharpening my sword, being able because when I first started, I was like, nah, I can't rap on that. That's too that's too much of a slow tempo. That's not hip hop. But then I have yeah. to switch mentality. I have to be like, okay, go go said he one time we were talking. He was like, yo, if 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 uh, spoons fall on the ground and it makes a rhythmic rhythmic sound then you should be able to rap to it like rap to anything so since then i was i was switched up my philosophy like okay i i try to cast the beat and like whatever it is i try to do something i try to stay me within the beat but like still try to maneuver so it's like oh shit this crowd's gonna like it and it's like so if i have like 30 different diff- different crowds of 10 but that's fucking with me then boom that's all you know what i'm saying like, that's like, yo, what, my philosophy is this if you're a good rapper if the beat sucks if the beat is trash Make it good with your voice, like it's it's your it's your responsibility to turn to turn that into gold. If that's garbage, you gotta turn it into gold. That's what you gotta do. So oh, like Nas. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. That's it. Hurt. That hurt. That hurt. I don't. That fuck, hurt. I don't fuck with that there. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> yeah, that hurt though. Like that yo, hurts. if I could see DJ Vlad, like he's so full of shit, bro. It was written had a. Yo, Wait, what did he say about it? It was real. Nah, because like, yo, he's like, oh, Illmatic's the only Nas album that has good beats. Like, no, that's not it's true. Not true. It was real. It has crazy beats on it. I, like, th- I think Godson yo, has bro, some good beats. Godson is crazy, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I definitely think he has some good beats, but I don't. But as a, when you consider how many songs he's played, his beats nowhere are nowhere near the level of artist that he is. I will say that. Like, nah, when you think about I, the, the, amount of, the top tier, when you think I'm about artists on his team, they you're, would. Uh, you're, you judging, you're judging his beats off of them being like, whether they hit pop. You know what I'm saying? Like whether they're, but his beats are really artistic. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's I like, get artistic stuff too, man. Like I, I get that stuff too. I just don't. I just think that they're. I just think, I like I said. I just don't think his for the on a, on a macro when you look at the collective of his of his beats. I don't think they're to the level of most artists that have had his level of success and that are his level of of rapper on a commercial level. I think he has a lot of dope beats, but nah, there there's some where I'm like, this this beat doesn't do anything for me. But what I, I rock will, my art. What I will say about Nas though, like the perfect the perfect example of Nas's career is remember the I Am album. Yeah, like that for me was amazing, but. When you got on the hooks, oh, the like, hooks you got to stop. Like, Yo, the, the, the hooks are not. Bro, that song with Scarface. I wear who you want, wear it. You <laughs> wear not. Like, <laughs> if not stays off all the hooks, it just, like, this is poetry. That's what, for me, that's what it is. That's not what really. I was about to say. I said, at the end of the day, Nas is better. Is a, is a, I would say, I would just throw the term lyricist, a poet. Like, he's, he's that. And he's that alone. He's somebody you don't need anything anyway and he just he's just great he's artistic his mute and his and i don't think i, I still think there could have been some more interesting th- things done with him but that, that that's a whole side we could literally go off this is about y'all we're gonna we're gonna get back to all right bef- 
we're um one last thing that I want to get to back into that culture thing because I had an interesting conversation. Um, it might have been with Russ B actually when we were just talking about Drake, and you were talking about something about race earlier, just being black in North America earlier. Why, Sue? Um, and we were talking about how Drake doesn't get too involved in a lot of things when it comes to race on the from a public perspective. I don't know what he does behind scenes, things like that. And we were trying to observe, is it because of his own cultural experience? Does he feel like this is just what's going on in America, but is it different in Toronto or his background? Does he not connect with it? Do you have people like Daniel Caesar who made his comment about uh, black people should chill out? So like, I just want to under, like, what's, get an understanding of what, are those relations like in, I guess, Montreal or whatever you know about, like, you know, you might be able to speak for Canada at, at large. What's the, for there to understand for people in America? I mean, it's, it's not, it's not as bad as, as in the States, but you, you definitely go through some shit that I don't agree with, with what Daniel Caesar said. I, I definitely don't agree with that. Cause I go through, like we all, if, if you're black in North America, you go through some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I know I, I be talking about this with a lot of people, like some white people. They're like, yo, like sometimes they're trying to figure out like, why you guys not like the police or blah, blah, blah. This and that. I'm like, how many times you get pulled over this shit? And like, I haven't got pulled over since whatever. I'm like, I've been pulled over like at least seven times in the last five months. And it's just like, <laughs> just like checks. And it's regular to me, you know, the old, they pull me over. I one time I was with this girl, this white girl. And she was like, we got, I'm like, the cop was right next to us. Actually, this happened with Ghost Sue. I talk, I talk about th this time like, instead. So we were just right, leaving the club. This is like maybe three, four years ago. And um, we drive in and the cop was right right next to us. And I look at Ghost, I'm like, we're, gonna, we're about to get pulled over. I'm like, oh, fuck. He's going to stop. He's going to go behind my car. And then he's going to run the place, whatever, and boom. Yo, ever since I was a kid, every time I see get, people getting pulled over, I was like, I'm not going to go through that embarrassment. I literally don't have my driver's license because of this shit. Like, I'm not going to go get my driver's license because I don't want to get pulled over ever. You know what I mean? I'm going to take the Metro, like, in Montreal, our public transportation is actually good. It's one of the best in the world. It takes me 20 minutes to get downtown. I'm good with that. I'm just sitting around the Uber. I but like, no yeah, car. that shit happens. I ain't going to get pulled over. Yep. I ain't trying to die. No, I fuck the police, man. That shit happens all the time. time. Like, I spoke about it with a, on the I'm bike, trying to live life bikes. strategically, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I spoke about it on, with, with bikes not long ago. They were talking about, like, oh, what type of, uh, you know, racial discrimination have you gone through? And uh, it's like almost two summers ago, I was just walking down the street. And then the cops pulled over, like, pull out guns on me, like, yo, yo, freeze, what's up? I'm like, what, what happened? And apparently I was, I fit the description of somebody who was stealing cars in the fit area. The description. And it's like, this is a, this is the hood. Like, it was the predominantly black area. Like, a lot of people lived here. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah he was a black guy with, uh, with dreads and, and, a, and a black hoodie. I'm like, come on, that could be anybody <laughs> here. Like, but, like, that, sh that shit happens all the time. I get pulled over all the time, you know? Yeah. When they clutch their purse next to me, like it's, it's like I said, it's not as bad as, as y'all, but yeah, because y'all be like really dying, dying. Yeah, if you are, if you are, like we have, we have, we have, yeah. we have our police brutality here too, but it's nowhere near the but, level. But also, like our population in Canada is thirty million. Yeah, it's like, and in Cali alone, it's like thirty-five million. So yeah, yeah that's like a thing to consider as well. But yeah, yeah. like. I with uh, Daniel Caesar, to, to answer. I, I didn't really see what he said, but and I don't want to talk too much about Daniel Caesar because, like, he's my boy's brother. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, like, you're going to have those perspectives over here because people are cool with people and shit. Yeah. But, like, in Montreal and in Toronto, I guess, like, yo. We don't like, know much about the other one. These are really multicultural cities where we, we don't really – we, we're not really about that culture vulture shit. We're more about cultural sh cultural sharing. So like, if white people like rock dreads or like rock like some other culture shit, it's because like over here it just means that they're just participating in what like their friend their friends culture. Just they're just showing like respect and shit. Yeah, like that's just how it is over here. You know what I mean? That's good to hear because like that's why I wanted to like me. You know, I I know I can only speak but so much for like other places. And I know, like, I don't know everything. So that's why I wanted to ask because I've literally had conversations where people have just told me blatantly, and these are not people from Canada, but this is something like, eh, I don't know. Like, I don't want to just accept that. Cause they'll say, oh yeah, it's such a melting pot. 
they don't have any kind of racism over there. I was like, okay, I mean, that's, <laughs> uh, that, that'll be cool. That'll be great. I just wanted to make sure I, I got an understanding. So that's even just for me to understand uh, what it's like, because I have not even been to Canada yet. That's probably going to change a couple of times this year. We'll see. But cool. Um, a, a, a small switch up as well, because you guys have been super active in the comments. I've seen some of those back and forths things you know get a little wild or whatever but y'all have mentioned some things like one thing that got mentioned was i don't know which one of you guys are writing this at this time yep. but does even have his password to his youtube account so it's definitely me yeah the okay okay so you are wilding on his behalf talking about one thing was being a i think it was a gym like a basketball coach or a referee or something like that which yeah. which like, one of y'all is a referee or whatever while he's being a basketball coach and shit, like making his money and shit, I'm like, ah, right, you know what? I have to take care of everything else. So yeah, I mean, you can talk about the basketball coach. Yeah, yeah, no, like on the side, I, uh, I help, I help my cousin coach. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I love basketball. You know, it's part of the culture, and I just, uh, I be helping him with the coaching side of things. So that's why, uh, he, you know, what I'm saying, he be, he be. I, I don't I like, I, like I hate, though. I hate YouTube comments. That's one thing. I hate. So I never. <laughs> Never like going into YouTube comments, so that's why he the whole YouTube shit. He take that, he take care of that. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. Look, <laughs> but what's the about the? I, I don't remember what I said. <laughs> it was something like, I'll be good. I'm not worried about. Like, I, I think I, I'm, I'm blowing up already, or I have a lot of views, but I'm not tripping like this to maybe sell out or something. I'm, I'm, I'm cool if I, if I can just, I'm, I don't know. It was like I'm, I'm good already. With what I'm doing, I'm almost content. But I do want to blow up. I, 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 can't, I can't remember the exact comment, man. I, 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 I know where I was going with this. Like, this, this is the narrative, all right? Like, yo, music is music. Like, yo, I'm not going to fucking die over music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got money to make in, in, in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yo, rappers become rappers because they want to become rich. But after they become rappers and they become rich, they're like, yo, this is just, this is just uh, my money to flip into other shit and really become rich. So for me, I'm like, yo, fuck that shit. Like, I know how to make money in other ways. I'm gonna just flip into real estate, into like clothing, into whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I study the game. I know how to make money. If this rap shit fails, we're still all gonna be eating. So it's all good. You know what I mean? Like, we're making this music shit. Hopefully we blow up. Hopefully we do good. I don't plan to fail in anything in life. Anything that I enter in, I'm gonna be the best at it. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how I live my life. You know what I mean? All right, what about? Trap Nation and getting on those websites because I saw some comments where people were like, oh man, you you pay to get on these things and then you guys said, no, you don't, you, you can't pay to get on it. I already know for a fact that those aren't. Like, I, I mean, I did a, I've done interviews, even one of my interviews, Lilo Key, try to, I helped him, he drove through the point that like, no, he didn't pay to get on those things. But try to describe again for nobody who's heard this before when it comes to Trap Nation or a lot of these other uh, those type of YouTube pages, how does that work? This is what I'm going to say. Like, yo, I plan to invest no money in this music shit. Because, like, this shit is really not worth investing in. Like, well, when you have these outlets that will get you millions of views and millions of plays, you don't have to invest any, any money anymore. You just make the music. You get the studio for free just off of our cloud. Like, we have the biggest English rapper name in the city get any studio we want for free we record that shit we have an in-house mixer and uh, uh slash master mastering engineer gets all our shit done that's it you know what i'm saying because yeah. you know, i went the we went the route where we would invest a lot more money than the return that we felt that we should get back you yeah know? the first one yeah the first one ever since then i'm like fuck that and then we were like no money we were like yo the, the money that we gave for people to to you know help us out publishing or whatever it is it wasn't worth it at the end of the day. It was just like paying people to contact people. But what if we could just be the direct link? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like, finally when we went through, and like I said, the first run, it was really trial and error. We were just like, all right, let's freestyle, let's see what happens. All right, we get, we get this bread up, spend it over here, let's see if it works. Yo, okay, that didn't work. And then afterwards now, like with this Trap Nation stuff, yeah, bro. It's not, we're not spending any money on exactly, that. It's like, yo, like, it's about, It's know, like, look, look, look at this shit. Nowadays, <laughs> blog era is dead. Fuck Complex, fuck Fader, fuck everybody. It's dead. You know what I'm saying? 
now you get on platforms. It doesn't have to be a blog. It has to be a platform with a large audience. With Trap Nation, what happened was we released a song called Summer Don't Go with this uh, L.A. duo producer called uh, Tasty Treat. And uh, their voice was my producer, uh, Dear Lola. So that song, like, was one of the first releases that Trap Nation as a label released. And it's one of their biggest songs. So now anytime I want something posted, I just hit them up like, hey, I have a song that's like uh, dubstep slash trap, trap, EDM trap. Can you post it? And they will post it. Hey, so what it all comes down to, because if you're not going to, it, it, it it's the basic three currencies, right? It's relationship, yeah, money. And then the other one's really just your own hustle and time and actually having the content. But, uh, but, but really, it's relationship and money as far as the things that matter most in, in music when it comes to getting your stuff seen. And when you said, I'm not spending money, you just doubled down on all these relationships that we even talked about early earlier in the yeah. conversation that you yeah bro because like look man ten, like ten, let, okay, let, let's give an example of like 10 racks right put 10 racks in, in into music yo it's gonna be a slow return i can put 10 racks into something else and make like in a week i can turn that 10 racks into into 15 you know what i'm saying if i put that into music it it, it, it makes no sense like i'm gonna wait a year to, to to get that back fuck that shit you know what i'm saying but now now everything's in the positives man like we did two he did two shows uh Last year, like opening for Maiden Tio, uh, with the other one, Killy and shit. Killy, yeah. Like, yo, pay, paid five racks, like, boom, boom, easy. You know what I'm saying? No investment. That's just positives. Like, fuck that shit. We don't got time to. And then once we make that money, we flip it into some other shit. But it's like, like, like you were saying, even with how you either the money or the relationships, but at the end of the day, it's just the relationship. The money is what buys you the, either buys you the relationship or the illusion of the relationship. But at the end of the day, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> saying so at the end of the day it's all it's all about the relationships if you can make that without the money then obviously that's better but money is what's, is what's going to get you the relationship sometimes but we're not i'm not into the pain for the relationship yeah like, fuck yo, that man like you yo, fuck with me and, or not yo you know we got all these about paying for the relationship yeah yeah because like what yo we got that and like we, we got we sorry got, what, you, what you said what do you mean by paying for the relationship i want to make sure it's clearly understood yeah i'm not paying like not like oh here's Here's this amount of money and post me on this. Like that's not, that's not oh, the type right. of shit that, that that I'm doing. It's more like we through the through the music. Cause at the end of the day, if the music is good, it's gonna work. So through the dope music, through the through the releases, we, we form the relationships, and then with the relationships, we're able to put out what I need to put out on whatever uh, platform. Yeah, cause like look, man, all these producers that I'm hunting and shit. For instance, uh, one of the most recent producers, their name is uh, Fur Fury. They're, they're a duo, and like <clears throat> every time they drop a song, Skrillex plays their song in the biggest festivals. Like 40 people in the fucking festivals and we're playing their songs. Like, I'm not, we're not paying for shit no more, man. Like, if I can get that for free, why the fuck am I going to pay for something? You like, why, that, like, yeah, I'm sure if you give Skrillex whatever amount of money, you'll be able, you'll be like, okay, I'll play your song, but rather than do that. Skrillex doesn't need fucking money. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So, but if we just go through like, that, yo, let's fuck, with, let's fuck with this producer who fucks with Skrillex, and then we'll see what happens. Exactly, because they already love his music because he can already rap to dubstep or EDM. Like, he's one of the only rappers who can do it in, in the whole world. He's one of the only rappers doing it in the whole world. See, so... That's one of the important things that I like to differentiate between because one, what you guys are doing is obviously working for you, but paying for stuff has obviously worked for a lot of people as well. Sure. Both routes work, but what's important is you guys have a philosophy and strategy and you're sticking to it versus keep going back and forth and trying this one little tactic, one little tactic and never giving any chance for anything to work out on one direction so you don't know what's working you just see random pops and you're always chasing y'all have found a couple of things that you say okay this popped i like how this this moved and this felt this is gonna be our philosophy and y'all continued it and got better and start and you're seeing the fruits of a strong strategy and that's when it so i, I like that you guys have that versus it, to me it doesn't matter how people pop like you know what i mean like i i don't judge people for oh they pop this way or he's a he's a plant or he had a rich mom or like whatever i don't care you know what i mean um but i hope everybody wins i hope everybody succeeds especially people who are like uh 
in communities where they're really put down. Like, I want everyone to win. I don't care how you fucking win, just win. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, yeah, uh, that, that's fact. But, but, because... but also, like, yo, we keep we keep all our options open. If we gotta pay for some shit in the future, I'm not gonna use it on my own budget. But like, we've had we've had uh, meetings with Empire and shit, and like, yo, it's getting to a point where they're seeing the stats and they're like, yo, we might just throw money at you. So if it's if somebody else is giving me money for, to pump up this music shit, all right, I'll use it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I'll be watching your videos because you got all the Facebook ads, the marketing shits, yeah. shit that like, yo, if you pump in money, I'm, I'm just like studying this shit because I don't want to pump in money without knowing what I'm getting into. So before I get the advance from Empire or whatever the fuck, I'm going to be studying my shit so I know where to, where to spend the marketing dollars at. And that's, we just don't want to, because like I said, when we started this, it was really just, yo, me and Ghost so and a couple, couple, of, you, couple you know? of other friends, like, yo, let's try to put some money in this and see where it is. But we really came, approached it, like, blindly. We didn't know where to put the money or what to do with it. And, you know, we had to go through trial and error. But now it's like, yo, we're not going to use, we're trying not to use our own bread at all to, to do any of this. Money. It's like, yo, if we can make the relationships, if we can build good relationships, and then those relationships get us, like, people who are willing to put money into it, then that's good, too. I study Rockefeller. I study Kanye. I study whoever. Always use somebody else's money. That's it. If you ain't giving me the money, I ain't gonna. I, I ain't gonna use my own money. Fuck that. Investors, labels, whatever the fuck, y'all throw the bread. I'll spend your bread. Easy. I'll, I'll get your returns. That's no problem. Got you, man. I love it. Took it seriously in 2012. Seven years in, you guys are where y'all are now. And that's not a short term, but it's still a, a, a long way for y'all to go. At the same time, I think it's great context. Appreciate the interview. It's been a joy. I love talking to you guys. Y'all got some final words? Yo, brand man, show man. Yo, keep doing your shit, man. Yeah, man. Your videos, man. All the branding shit, all the breakdowns and analytics and all that shit. It's crazy. So, Appreciate it. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you for listening to me, to us, and, you know, supporting people who are not not super big and popping, but on the, on the way to getting there, you know? Yeah, man. For sure, man. For sure, man. I just want everybody to get in their pockets, you know what I'm saying? Their pocket crowds, their niche audiences, tap into it. I don't care how you guys win, just win, man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? There's a lot of money out there. Like everybody, everybody can win. Yo, dog, there's so much money in the fucking world. You know what I'm saying? There's trillions of dollars in circulation. Like, yep. guys, however you get your money, just go and fucking get it and improve your conditions. That is all. I'm not hating on you if, you, if you're making money, man. That's why I don't like talking shit about artists. Like, if somebody makes a song that I don't like, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say that I that the song sucks or that I hate it or anything it's like that. Just not for me. It's for the crowd that they're making it for. Yeah. I don't have to understand it. You know what I'm saying? But I try to keep an open ear. I try to like things in life. It's better to like. It's better to enjoy things in life than to hate stuff in life. That's it, man. I want everybody to win. Thanks. I love it. I love it. My my philosophy as well. Everybody, I will put their social medias and all that good stuff up on the screen in the description below so you, if you want to you know check them out follow them check out the music all that good stuff it'll be there for y'all to check out if you like this video go ahead hit the like button if you like you might as well share and if you're not subscribed you know what to do hit that subscribe button